Hi everyone, this is this is Football Africa, and it's saying it like it is, and the only man who really says it like it is is the one and only Gavin Hunt, my guest again today. Gavin, how are you, buddy? I'm all right, Fila. Nice to see you, man. I haven't seen you. All. I haven't spoken to you since Chris, before Christmas and uh, New Year, and I wish you well. You know, hope you have a good, yeah, good year. You, you didn't buy me a present, but we won't talk about that. Now, nah, as you get older, you don't buy presents anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have a beer. The, we'll have a beer the next time we see each other. That's, but guys, that's before for sure. we start, before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe and to comment. It's what keeps us going. And the more comments we get, the more subscriptions, the more Google loves us, and the more we can do for you. But Gavin, um, let's start on a on a on a very simple uh, beginning. Your last game, Stellies, a uh, great goal by the way, a great simple goal. Talking about simple midfielder, yeah, knocks a great ball wide, perfectly paced ball, uh, ball wide. Your Campbell mm. one touch pings a great crossing. And your strength forward, Krobler comes in and does what a big striker should be. By the way, I don't think the Stellenbosch left back uh, was on the right side and he was a bit ball watching. But besides the Stellenbosch left back, fantastic goal. And Yeah, I think, Peter, I think those, are the type of, those are the type of training ground goals, you know. Uh, it was a great build up from the back. Good ball played through into the striker, down dropped and then into the third man wide. You know, those are the type of goals you practice at training when you do unopposed training, you know, to get the, the rhythm in the team. So... When you see it work, the only thing, the downside of it is we did it once and we scored once. And I said to them, you know, even at halftime, I said, we've had so many opportunities to do the same thing and we haven't done it. And, you know, and uh, and we didn't get the second goal. And then obviously they got that, that equaliser and then the game sort of petered out after that, you know. Yeah. Well, it's almost like a, it was a typical start of the season game, even though it's midway through the season. But an interest, interesting point about this goal, if you look at English Premier League football, you'll see lots and lots of movements like that ball knocked wide quick ball inside great challenge by a striker or sometimes defender clears you don't really see that in south african football and i and i know people think that you know all football has got to be played on the ground but if you look at top class world football all over the world ball gets wide great crosses come in because it's it's difficult for goalkeepers these days they don't come they don't come off their line so you've got a great chance of scoring or getting the second ball and i don't understand why it's not done more and it, why wouldn't your team do that more? They've already, they saw that weakness. Why don't why well, would the players want to do Yeah, because, you know, players sometimes, that's the, that's the most important thing with coaching, Peter. I think you need to um, you need to get them doing it uh, subconscious, unconsciously, you know what I mean, but in a conscious state. So there's a whole yeah. sequence of things that you do in coaching. And if you're doing things in, in, in a conscious state, in an unconscious way, um, You'll you'll get better and better as a team because what what football is all about. Yes, we need the individual, but we need a team to understand what we're trying to do. And like I say to mm. the strikers, you know, if the strikers are not scoring and they're getting service, we're going to get rid of the strikers. If the strikers are, are not scoring and they're getting no service, we're, we're going to get rid of the wide players. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we need to get this thing. I always say in football, when you get telepathic understanding of what what needs to happen. I mean, I think too many teams play off the cuff, and it's just. And we'll pass, 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 and then something will... And then it's, 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 it's hard to watch, where I think if you know and be a little bit more predictable in type of things, I, I think football, you know, and, and, and people might say it's old school or old ways, but so many goals get scored from crossing, cutbacks. Uh, you know, you, you can get higher and you get a cutback where you're coming in late in the box, um, you know, through balls, you know, these type of things. So, you know, you, you we practice certainly different ways of trying to score, but... When you get in those situations with your defenders facing the goal and the ball's coming around in front of them, they don't have much chance between the goal, you know, and if you get decent balls. So it takes practice, but it takes mm. also the mentality of the players and the team to, to get it into the team and drill it into the team, you know. Yeah. But Gavin, just for our younger um, viewers and listeners, you know, who may not remember soccer in the, the old days, when I'm talking 70s and 80s, but I can assure them, Believe me, the strikers in those days, and I'll just use Chiefs because they're one of those popular teams. Obviously, when you had Fani Medid and Shane McGregor up front, I can tell you right now, A, Fani was a speed merchant, and B, Shane McGregor could go up there and hit a ball. If crosses weren't coming in or through balls weren't happening, they were on their team and they were going, Oi, you get those crosses in. We had good wingers in those days, into the byline, yes. pull it back, or put a cross in without beating a defender. And I think you don't have to beat a defender, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I played, I played with Shane, and 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 I played against Shane a lot of time. And he would be moaning at the wide players when the ball, when he makes a run to the near post, and the ball doesn't come in. You know, um, 
and 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 that that way of now what's happened in football generally they've gone all inverted wingers so you've got a left foot on the right so you're not getting that shape where if you look at uh, say man city as soon as kevin de Bruyne comes back and he puts crosses in for holland in, yeah. in in those wide dangerous areas where but they've got grealish on the one side and say uh, somebody on the other side will cut in on okay. so they don't the ball's always going away from the striker. You want the ball to come into the striker, you know. And I mean, but you I look mean, at you listen to Alan Shearer. He always used to say to his white players, "Just put it in there, and I'll go find it." You know what I'm saying? You know. And well, it's very difficult to defend against if you do it properly and do it effectively. I'm not saying that's all the time, but okay. you know, you can you can you can get your fullbacks come in on the overlap, and they put the ball in around the back, or or there's a cutback when it's deeper. The cutback for me is the, the cutback's the hardest ball to defend because. You know, you're all defending. Yeah, and you're defending back at your goal, and the ball gets played to the edge of the box or cut back into the, I call the golden box, which is outside the the small box to the big box, that little area. It's very difficult to defend that ball, you know. So, yeah, it was a great goal. And then I'm going like, okay, that's once. Now I'm waiting. Let's do it again. And we didn't do it much after that, you know, which is a bit disappointing. I think there's two, two points here, just again, for for listeners, because they love the the football comment, the, you know, not just uh, yeah. ordinary chat. But I think that what's lacking in South African football, not that I think, I know what's lacking in South African football, is you don't have enough players on the park who can read a situation and say, that's working, let's get the ball wide to him all the time, let's get the ball wide, because the coach can't speak for 45 minutes. You, you can shout, but you can't speak. It's the guys, the yeah. players on the field, get the ball wide to him, get the ball wide to him, and, and tell them, He's got the beaten of the fullback. He can get crosses in. Then you can shout your striker. He's knocking them in. You've got to get there. I don't think there's enough on-field coaching by players these days. It's very yeah. silent. I mean, if you, if, you, if, you look at, if you look at the Sundowns Pirates game from Saturday, I'm just giving an example. Yeah. It was crying out, and, and this is not a coaching thing, from, just as a, a spectator watching it, it was crying out for a bit of width. That everybody yeah. was playing in the, in the width of the goalpost. They had, they must have had 20 players in the width of a goalpost trying to play little one-twos through. If they just cried out with a little bit more width, uh, yeah. and it, not not for a cross, no, but just a little bit more width, we could have drawn people out and then go back in. So, you know, well, I, if people say, people, I mean, you hear people say they don't like width in football. Okay, well, but I'm telling you now, that's why the pitch is 78 or 80 meters wide. You must try and use the width because if you're playing against a team and doesn't use width and they stay down through the middle, you just you can just stay in a in a little block there and and they can play there all day and they'll get lucky with a bobble and a flick yes. But I think the variation of using width is is width is a for me, I grew up with width. Peter, you grew up with width. You know, I was coached width. And it stayed with me. Yes, we could play with diamonds and, and go narrow in midfield and don't use the width because it needs that. But width is a you know, there's nothing worse, Peter, when a fullback has to, or defender has to come out and there's one v one now, and this guy, and no, you got him, and you got him flat, and you got him square. You know, no. there's two two things going to happen. You're either going to go past him, or he's going to kick you and stop you, and you're going to get a foul and free kick. So there's, there's only po- well, once you come back and go back inside, which like, and I think watching City play sometimes is frustrating because they go back inside all the time, back inside. Get it down, you know. Let's try and run him inside, yeah. outside, and uh, there's nothing well, then, better than then, seeing a teenage Dudler, a teenage Dudler, yeah. a Trevor Mundunkulu wide player, um, you know, and they and they and they be, and they're having a go one v one. You know, it's 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 great for me, fantastic to watch. You know, but listen, Real Madrid, they play with white men. You aren't probably the greatest. Vinicius ever. and um, what's other guy on the other men. side now? Yeah, yeah. great man, Vinicius great to watch. And, and- Rodrigo, uh, um, um, Barcelona in their Barcelona in their prime in their prime, yeah. they had two great wide players, and they got the ball out to that guy, and then there was a one v one and a or a, or a, a give and go or a you know a third man supporting run or whatever. It was brilliant to watch. And so yeah, I and I think South African football. If you look at South African football through when I grew up, we there was, there was wide players. Every team had two good wide players. Always, always, always. I mean, mm-hmm. Swallows. Swallows at Ace Benini. I, I just go, mm. Pirates always had a, like a Hellman Makelele, um, yeah. you know, these type of guys. If it was a fullback, maybe. I mean, you go through all the teams. They all had good wide players. You know what I'm saying? You know, so. Micro, Mark, I don't masterpiece. Know. You know, there's, there's tons. Like- South, Af- South Africans are natural wide players. The Argentinians have a, have a name for it. They call it the pickpockets. The guys who get the ball wide, like the little, the little scullies, and they, they go past two people and they get a little crossing without, you know, they, they can do the tricks. 
But anyway, Brazilian, the bottom line, Brazilian football, Brazilian football, always had good wide players. I, for me, when I go to a stadium, I want to see a wide player have a go at somebody, you know, like a 1v1 yeah. and, and, and drop a shoulder and step overs. I love that. I, I enjoy that. Not everybody enjoys it. Some people say, oh, I don't like what they want to play narrow. That's fine. But it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a what's the word? It's a preference. That's all, you know. Yeah. Well, the, the, whole, the whole world's playing with wide players. Um, oh. But on that basis, look at your third on the league. Or second, really, between you and uh, you and uh, um, Cape Town City, you're sitting with your points ahead of uh, Chiefs and Pirates. You don't have the budget of Chiefs and Pirates. Just a couple of little points. I mean, before, I, I think since you, I, I looked it up. Since you left SuperSport, they never ever finished in the top four. Last year, you got them in the top four. This year, it looks like you're going to be there again. The first oh, question is, that's getting you there when they couldn't uh, Baxter and everybody there. That's the first thing, and secondly. You have no right, and nor have Stellenbosch in particular, or even Cape Town City, have a right to be above Chiefs and Pirates. Um, you know, Pirates and Chiefs could say, well, we can't match Sundowns because we don't have their budget. But they certainly got a bigger budget than Cape Town City, Supersport, and Stellenbosch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why, yeah. What are they doing wrong? And what are you doing right? I don't, I don't think it's anything they're doing wrong. I think it's um, what uh, I can only speak from a personal point of view. I think what we try and do is try and get the team very organized, Peter. Um, and, and, and with the ball and without the ball. And I always say the team, uh, the best team in the league, you know, in, in, in the leagues generally got the best players. But if you go down the leagues, the teams that are doing well are generally the teams that are organized without the ball. You know, and I always say we need to be good without the ball. Now, what does that mean? Are oh, you not going to use the ball? to? Sp no. And the moments will come when we can play out. But I think, you know, if you're good without the ball, and people have, are humble because you need players to be humble to play without the ball, Peter. It's not a nice thing chasing and running. And but if you and you will, and, and footballs are one of the only games where the team can be far superior to you individually, but collectively you can have a very good team without the ball. How is press? You know, and and, and if you've got an understanding how you want to press and how you want to play without the ball, I think that's the first step. And then we need to progress and obviously how we're going to try and getting the opposition's half, where we are, we're going to play, what are we going to try and do in certain areas. And, yeah, and and I just think it's uh, – in South African football, I think there's a lot of ill-discipline uh, in the teams and you'll find a lot of um, counter-attack transitional football because teams don't play to a solution. They just play and then the ball gets turned over and then there's a hell of a counter-attack the other way. So we try and play to a solution, a shot, a cross, a pass – and then we can obviously retreat. But but if we turn the ball over and we give it away cheaply, that's where the, we need to be really good. And, and we concentrate. So the things you concentrate on are, are, are those generally those type of things, you know. So what you really said is why you're doing well and indirectly said why you're doing better than Chiefs and Pirates. Um, no, no, I didn't say that. No, 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 I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I only spoke about myself. I can't speak on behalf of, of other clubs. Listen, I mean, uh, last year we came third. Oh, we should have come second. We threw a few games away. But that goes down to the squad. Uh, no disrespect to our my squad, but I've got a very thin squad and a very I've got I've got older play really older players and really young players. I don't have that balance of of having a good, you know, players that are, are, are have played a lot of and got a lot of experience and we're still young. Do you understand what I'm saying? We've got a few yeah. now. We, so I've tried to build, build it up slow. And then last year we come third and then we sat well, our three best players, well, three of our starting 11 best players leave. Now you're sort of saying, now we start again. So, and, and, and defensively, if you, our, goals against, our goals against this year is too many because defensively, we've struggled. We've conceded yeah. far too many goals because if you look at my defense, it's changed every game. Every game has changed. The center backs change, the full back change, they'll be playing, you know, you play with a back three, back five because we haven't got consistency in that position. And that, because we lost one of our biggest players there last year, you know. So, Gavin, I'll tell you why I think you do better than Chiefs and Pirates with a limited budget. First of all, everything that you said about why you're doing well is correct. If we look at uh, um, Chiefs and Pirates in particular, they are, I don't think the club, the management, and by definition, maybe even the coach, are understanding their position. You understand your position clearly. You know absolutely clearly. Almost every season, you start with a completely new squad because you sell your best players. 
That's no, you it's, don't. It's, you know, it's, it's an absolute. I mean, we have uh, sleepless nights. I can't. Yeah. I, I'm. Tr- it's not like uh, it's not like I'm trying to who I'm trying to leave out. I'm trying to put a team on the field. It's a big difference. Where at, at the bigger clubs, they saying, "Geez, who do we leave out?" They taking twenty five people to a a, a, a a camp, and then they go, "Who we, you know, geez, who do we leave out?" I'm going. I'm going to try to get a starting eleven. <laughs> That's, I, I, there's a big difference the, there. There's a big difference there. The point you know? I'm making, Gavin, and maybe you too, you too modestly said, and it would be wrong for you to, to say this, and I'm not trying to buy your face. Because no, I'm, no, no, get, I'll, I'll never. I can't talk on I behalf. Get, I'll always talk on my yeah, team. You know, that's got nothing to do with me. You know. But I get tons. We get tons of calls uh, and, and, and on, on Twitter, uh, and I get comments on Chiefs and Pirates fans. They are the majority of the of, of the. Uh, oh, the well, they control now. the media. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, they got the biggest support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, listen, why are we not doing well? Why, why are smaller teams like Stellenbosch and Cape Town City and, and Supersport doing better than us? And if you look at Supersport, you've been above them now too, well, certainly last season and this season as well. And I think one of the reasons is that you're a realist. You know what yeah. you're dealing with. You've got, yes. you know that you're using your best players. You know you've got to come in the top three or four and you've worked out that with what you've got, that's what you're going to deliver. I think with, with Chiefs and Pirates, they're not evaluating what they've got realistically. I don't think, and they don't, you know you're in charge of super sport. You get you understand your budget, you understand what you've got, and you know your limitations, and you've got to act. I mean, your limitation, I'm talking about your budgetary limitations and your playing staff limitations. And you've yeah. therefore there's a big onus on you to deliver in what you got. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I Whereas, think I think, I think, Peter, I think, Peter, I think, I think Peter. The easiest, the easiest thing, and I think it's happened in South African football for too many years. The easiest thing is to, obviously, move the coach on, and just bring in players. You know, mm. you'll you'll always see the, of the bigger clubs in South Africa at the beginning of the season who are we signing, but they've got a very good team already. They'll say, now we need to sign players. Why? Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? So they they just throw in players at it and throw in new managers at it or coaches, whatever you want to call them. And sometimes you need to say. Uh, right, we need to settle down with these 15 or 16, even though the squad is 24, 25, and these are our core players. Now we need to get them playing uh, the right, the way, you know, that's going to be effectively with the, with the players that you've got. So I think what happens at a club like us, we we get a good team going. And, and Stan knows the reason why I left Supersport in the first place is because you killed me. You cut my knees off me. You cut my legs off. Because we win, I said to Stan, Stan, we'll win the league for seven, six, seven years in a row here. The team was young, the team was vibrant, and then all of a sudden, they go. Dennis Young go, Palembe goes, Clayt goes, Mashecha goes, Medise goes, Mapele goes. And they all start going. Uh, Bongani Kamala, Morgan Goulds. They all, now you, you're cutting me, maybe they didn't want my, maybe they, I couldn't get my bonus anymore, that's why. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to say is, so they're cutting my, and, 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 and to be fair, I was told we're not selling the coders anymore because you can't have Supersport winning the league. So they said, right, we're selling the team, we sell the players. <laughs> but I understood that. Yeah. And I went, right. I want to be more competitive. And obviously then I went to Vits and, you know, things happened from there. Because uh, so they wanted to be a bit more comp- But in at Vits, you, we, you know, yeah, but at Vits we bought one player, the rest were all frees and loans, you know. Not, mm-hmm. So I heard a, a coach say, oh, but he all support players at Vits and look at, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Their team was built from frees and loans and out-of-contract mm-hmm. players. We never went and just bought players, you know. So sometimes you, 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 when you've got a problem in football, it's no good just saying, oh, let's change a manager, which is normally happens. I understand that. But let's change. Let's bring in seven players. Now we're going to be a good side this year. But they're not the right seven players. They're not the right mm-hmm. players for this particular club. So your signings, your, Peter, your signings are key. If you've got money, they're key. If you've got no money, well, I've got to take what I can get. But if you've got money, you can, you can really – so you've got five foreigners. You could be, and if you've got if you're a wealthy club, which there's a few clubs are, you can, you can get really good five foreigners, and you, I think you can, you, you can be really yeah. competitive. So the signings of players, and I think if you look at Sundowns, when Pizzo took over, he was clever because there was no more square pegs in round holes. There was players mm. – Specifically for the way we want to play, and then obviously it's changed 
and 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 develop with you know Rolani and uh, Mugobe and and Steve coming in. They've changed the way they play, so they brought the players in that the way they want to play. So yeah. it's not just signing players. They, you know, they signed cleverly, and then and, and obviously they could you know they could spend it as well. So you, I think don't just throw. I mean, if you look at the team, Wendy, I think we won the bits. I think Chiefs won it after us. That team of Chiefs, it wasn't a it wasn't a great Chiefs side, but it was a very good Chiefs side, and they won the league. I think it was Stewart's time, you know, sure. when they had uh, Cassande. And Cassande was at Ajax. They got rid of him. Was he, But he yeah. did a very good job for Chiefs. At, and yeah, Yeye yeah, and Shabalala and Parker and, uh, I mean, Kingston, the Carter, and these guys weren't renowned top strikers that got you 25, 30 yeah. goals. But they were right for yeah. what was going on at the club. And they won the league. You know, they were very competitive. And he used, he very rarely used outside of 15, 16 players there. Very rarely. You know what I'm saying? And you want to- there was a core group of, yeah, there was a core group of players. Um, I'm just going back, you know, a few years. Same with me at Vitz, yeah. same with me at Supersport. There was a core group of players and, and you work with them and coach them and and then you will get better. But there were the, I wouldn't say the the, the, the ones we wanted, but the best ones that was available per, per budget. You know what I'm saying? So people get very skewed sometimes. Oh, sign players, sign players. But that's not certainly the right, the, the way to go about it, you know? Yeah, but it goes back to the point I was making. Are you responsible for the final decision on whether a player is signed by your club or not? Well, obviously, Peter, if I say I want to sign you, Peter, but you want um, uh, two million rand over the budget that we prepare to pay. I'm just giving you up. I, I, I can extend my hand and stand there. Do it. do handstands. I'm not going to get you. At other clubs, yeah. you could possibly get them because they will make a plan or whatever. So... Okay, so hard work, Peter. What's it? Well, let me change the question around. Would Supersport say, by the way, we bought you this player, whether you like it or not? No, no, that'll never happen. No, that'll never happen. No, no. That's the point I'm making. And so I, and, you yeah, and, right, and rightly final... so. I mean, I, I, I won't mention coaches and managers' names. They would come to training and, and a, a player would come on the training and say, this is your new striker. I mean, you know, they've signed him. And I said, no, that cannot happen with me. Uh, I, I will not. You know. I mean, you're in the job, but the point I'm trying to say is, for me, it's got to be the coach. This is the way we want to play. Obviously, it's very, you need – what's the word? A club, there's certain clubs anywhere in the world. You, you need time, but sometimes you don't have time and you've got to fit in, you know. Um, yeah, so – no, but I would I, – I, Peter, I, it, can, it can't work, Peter. The manager or the coach needs to have a, a, a final say. The figures and the, and the contract situation – I also That's think different. managers should be involved in that, you know, a bit, you know. And I know it doesn't happen in South Africa, you know. No. Well, because if you get one player earning way more than everybody else, you upset the apple cart. Not only that, Peter, when people get like extension of a contract, so the guy's got six or eight months or a year left, and people, management just sign the player, they're going to keep him without consulting with the manager, you know, or the coach, or to say, yeah. listen, yeah. He's, got, he's, got a, he's running down now a year. Do, what do you think you want to keep him? Well, um, yeah, I'd like to keep him, but uh, but they want the money. Is ad- well, then I say, well, then you need to renegotiate. How much do you want the guy? Then you know it'll go backwards and forwards like that. So I think that's how it's got to be. Obviously, the owner of the club or the management need to make the final call. But um, sometimes coaches, you know, players don't fit. Sometimes with coaches and and other coaches, you'll find a new coach comes in and the player was on the bench or gets in. You'll always see a team if they lose if they lose a lot of those players. They will be out the squad the next week or two. You know what I'm saying? Um, so but there's a the lot of. Line, you had the trust. You've got the trust of Stan and Matthews and Supersport. That's clear. I like to think. I, yeah, you always like to think so. You know, obviously, they, you know, but I, I always say, Peter, you know what the biggest thing in football is? And I, and, I, and I say it every week is honesty and directness in front of people, sure. not, not in emails, yeah. not on WhatsApps. Uh, and sit across the desk with me and let's explain what is actually going on here, how we play, what we need to play. And people make assumptions from other people saying things to them without really talking to the most important guy, which is the manager or the coach. You know what I'm saying? And don't make assumptions in football without talking directly to your, uh, to your coach. You know what I'm saying? You know? Um, yeah. Oh, Gavin, and I, I, I'll listen. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I, Obviously, you need to, I think at any football club anywhere in the world, I'm not talking about myself, but you also need to gain the trust from the board or the management. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And how do you get trust, Peter? Well, results. Because results gives you trust, doesn't it? 
I mean, that's how yep. fickle, and that's how fickle this game is. You know, you have a manager that uh, Bafana. Did, did they trust Hugo before you went to the tournament? Not really. Not you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, four ga- five games later, is the best thing since sliced bread, which is fantastic. But he's gained the trust now a bit more, and 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 he can maybe demand a bit more in terms of. Organization, preparation, uh, you know, those type of things, logistic stuff, you know what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. So, Gavin, our, our viewers and our listeners are bright. They've, they, they know their football. They've listened to you, and I think they can conclude their, they'll conclude their own, uh, make up their own minds as to why Supersport are doing better than Chiefs and Pirates. I think you, in, no, in I, I mean, you. Peter, listen, the history books will tell you that they, you know, uh, I always say, Give it time till the 30 games, you know. I mean, last year, we I think uh, I knew, you know, we could get that second place and then we lost the game. And then we beat Chief, which knocked them out and we came third. So, it's always going to be that rivalry. And, and you need that in football. But I think it's important not to not to concern, uh, for me personally, not to concern myself too much with with beating so-and-so and so-and-so. Let's, let's try and win games like, the bottom of the league teams, which you haven't done, and that's been disappointing, you know. And and those three points are just as important, with all due respect to 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 you know anybody uh, else, you know. Good. But just moving on, it, but it is important for South African football. If I take Super Sport and Captain City and Stellenbosch out the equation, it's important for South African football that the teams with with big money, which are Chiefs and Pirates, yes. that it creates more interest. They, Peter, they, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that Chiefs, Pirates, and Sundowns competing for the league creates more interest. Yeah. There is no doubt, and, no doubt, and and, and 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 it's sad because you know these clubs that were very very well run clubs like City and Stellenbosch and uh, SuperSport and and mention a few others Amazulus and well run clubs that are, are that also deserve, but you do need those big football brands to to be competing because it creates a different cool. hype, a different vibe. The stadiums start getting fuller even when they play. Against us, the stadium will be fuller because of their position in the league. You know what I'm saying? True. You know, so I mean, I'll yeah. look, at the look, look at Sundowns versus um, uh, Pirates. The stadium was full, incredible yeah. atmosphere. Look at Chiefs versus uh, um, uh, um, Royal AM. I've never seen such an empty stadium for a Chiefs away game. So no, if Chiefs were if Chiefs were in the, in the top two competing, I think it would have been full there. You know what I'm saying? Right. But in saying the same, Sundowns when they play. Super sport, or they play the stadium's not that full, you know what I mean? Yeah. It should be fuller, but yeah. it is what it is, you know. That's yeah, that's something that biggest. obviously that's something that you know I, I don't know what, what it is, but we need to get more people in the stadium. I mean, look at the Nations Cup now, fantastic because there was people in the stadium, there was a vibe there, you know, it was good, it was brilliant, you know. Listen, I don't think it's that difficult to get people to the stadium. I think the PSL knows the answers, but I don't think the PSL is putting those answers into practice. But that's a separate issue. Yeah. Um, let's just, uh, before we move on to the AFCON, um, Lord's going to to uh, Sundowns. I mean, that's a hell of a, a son. He's, 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 I mean, he's 30 years old, but he's just, they've just weakened Pirates and strengthened uh, Sundowns. Peter... I, I couldn't tell you the thinking behind it. I know, obviously, uh, Rolani worked with him at Pirates. So, listen, a guy like Lorch should have been in the Nations Cup squad. He is a, he's a top, top player. And he's Great. a versatile player that can play in, certainly for me, two, three positions across the front. Um, he could play in centre midfield if you wanted him to. I, I, you know, and he's such a... And, I mean, he scored their goal against Egypt, wasn't it? The, the last... The, when they beat Egypt. Yes. Remember they knocked Egypt out? The last, the, the last one. Yeah. Yeah. He's got goals but in something's life. happened. I, I don't look. I don't know what's happening in his life or his career. But he he's, he hasn't he hasn't got the mileage under his belt that he should have had. Yeah. Mileage meaning yeah. numbers, games, assists, goals of the you know. And now, I mean, to be fair, but he, you know, and now he's gone to a club where there's going to be bigger competition. Wow, yeah. you know, um, you know, and uh, I mean, and they got so many players that play all. You know, very uh, so. Yeah, it was it was quite a strange um, move, but obviously, I think obviously Lani knows him and liked him, and uh, and they feel yeah. they want to use him in a certain way. So let's see how it pans out. But certainly, um, you know, um, he's, he's a he's a player. That, he's a player that should be for me. He's a player that should be in the squad that goes to Algeria next month if he plays a couple of games now. You know, yeah. yeah. And talking about that, I mean, obviously, uh, I think uh, we don't have to 
discuss it. The AFCON from a standard of play was superb relative to the other AFCONs with attack. It was attacking football. The refereeing was good. The VAR was good. The crowds just, were good. The pitches. I just want to mention something about the football, Peter. You know, the modern day football, everybody talks about now about, you know, two centre backs and we build up from the back and everybody plays this way now. Did you ever, did you see that in the AFCON? Not at all. It was, it was incredibly exciting. Oh, good. It was not any, so what, what did you just say? It was incredibly exciting. This stuff yeah. from the back, I mean, if it ends up in a in a shot or a cross, but how many times does the ball get cut out in the centre midfield after this great build up and then it, it, it fizzled out to nothing? So if you watch the, the Nations Cup, this the one now, there was directness in the play. I'm not saying long ball. People don't get confused now. It's not long ball. Directness, forward passing, yeah. forward moving, yeah. forward running, running behind people, playing on a third man's. And it was exciting to watch. There was some great movement, great football. So the modern and day... And the, and the and modern day, it's like what yeah. the modern day football that everybody, oh, every, you know, you know what, you know what, I feel sorry for all the young coaches today, Peter. If you don't play yeah. a certain way, you're not a good coach, and that's what's right. happened in our football, in world football. So you get judged. They say, oh, this is. A, so you listen to around the world, and oh, he's a top coach because he plays the modern football, but he can't win a game. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you go. Goals is it all away, about? You know, you know so you're going to be. Very careful yeah. what we coach with young players. Yes, we want to play football. We want to pass the ball and move it and, and create situations. Yes, we understand that. But if you watch the Nations Cup, my goodness, it was directness. All of yeah. a sudden, Ronwin, Ronwin was a goalkeeper. You know, what he, Ronwin's the best distributor of the ball I've seen. But from Cooney, he's the best. Yeah. Ronwin, unbelievable. Good. He can pinpoint a guy, hit the winger 60 meters away on the foot, running full speed. Hit it on his foot. And he used to do yeah. that, you know, and, and you must brilliant. Use him, you must use to do that, <laughs> you know, if you've got that asset. But but I thought the well, I thought the Afghan was superb, and I loved watching it. The and pictures. I switched. The pictures. Yeah. Afterwards, I'd watch a, a Premier League game, and I go, God, this is nowhere near as, and it could be Liverpool. And I was going, this is nowhere near as exciting as the Afghan. But anyway, well, yeah, it's a to... big statement. <laughs> okay. You go, yeah. Bruce. You one of the few guys who I mean, I know you. You met him many times. You have a good chat to him. You like him and so on. He took a team of basically PSL players and and an, and one playing in the second tier in in Portugal and one playing in the in a top team in in Egypt and we were we were compact. I thought we were the best organised side in 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 the Afcon and I thought without the ball, obviously without the ball, yeah, yeah, yeah without the ball, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, but I think yeah. and that is I've never seen that in a South African team actually. I think we're the probably I, I the think, most. I think I think I think you know what what. what I, listen, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's clever. I think what he did was just basically common sense by saying, right, Sundowns are the dominant team. I mean, ninety ninety percent of the players are going to come from them because they got the best play. Well, you know, they got players that are, are you know in their positions. There's not many. It looks in there. There's always going to be a debate about the team, Peter. Any football team anywhere in the world, national team. Oh, you should have, could have. Listen, there's a good few players that possibly. You know, I won't mention names, but she could have gone in that squad. We all know that. But he chose those yeah. guys. He stuck with those guys. He believed in them. And sometimes, you know, people forget about um, the team unity and the togetherness of teams. It can get you. It'll get you points. It'll get you goals. It'll get you. There was great determination. Uh, like the combinations, you know, the back five, they all play together. You know, the whole back five, the back four and, 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 and Ronwin. So that, that was pretty simple. Is it better? Yes, possibly. Could be, yes. Midfield players, he had a big, strong boy. Listen, he also needed a bit of height and a bit of strength in his team. And I think yeah. evidence helped him. That and the boy, uh, Satoli, helped him with that. Because you look at yeah, that, you know, we don't have the biggest aerial team in terms of, you know, and you're going to get yeah. a lot of that in um, in Africa from restarts and throw-ins and corners and all these type of things. So, you know, he did well with that. And, and as you say, out of position of the ball, great shape. And then we had that mm. spring where we could get out, you know, with a bit of Zwani, we get you out up the pitch, you know, and then you had the pace of Moreno and Tapelos and, you know, and yeah. uh, Mambelas and these type of things. So, yeah, it was great. It was great. It was great. I'm very good. But you know, no I'm, happy. I'm, happy be, I'm happy because it went back to an old traditional type of football. You know, it, it was very, people might say it's boring, but boring sometimes, no, was... look up or get you, you know what I'm saying, you know? No one's mentioned this, by the way, Gavin. Or maybe they haven't. I haven't. Uh, I haven't heard it. But people, everybody's talking about a, super, uh, a Sundowns team, and it, quite correctly so. But it's actually also a Supersport team. All these players came from you. 
Williams, <laughs> Mekana, Masipe, Mekwena, yeah. Maseko. That's what five, what's that, three, five, four, five players. Uh, no, maybe more. To Mekwena, Tapela, Maseko, obviously, um, Aubrey. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, all those guys run, run. So most of them made their debuts. Most of them made their debuts at Supersport, but obviously you're not going to get the record. Not that, I'm not that you know we know deep down where they've come from, and uh, and we're all very happy with them. But obviously you know uh, Sundowns get the recognition because they're there now and they they've moved on in their careers, and and you can't always live in the past. Uh, and and fair play, and uh, but you know those boys did come from a lot of them came from uh, yeah us, you know. So well done, well done to Supersport. It was a, so it's a Supersport Academy. Not me, the club, the club, yes. yeah, the club. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Supersport Academy going towards uh, to Sundance. But anyway, moving on, a more serious note. A uh, good teammate of both of ours. He, he played with me first, then eventually when I left, he played with you as well. Uh, the late Dicky Benjamin passed away after a long illness. Uh, any memories? Um, I've got great Users. memories. Um, the year that, um, uh, I'll, I'll give you the year, 1982. So I'm play, we played at Durban City, won the league, and we beat them home and away. And um, he scored a goal at Hartley Vale. We beat them one 0 at Hartley Vale. I'll never get that. It was a, it was an afternoon game. He hit one, and it swerved. I mean, could Dicky? You could you would shoot from anywhere, Dicky, and he and he, he had bent in the top corner from a good from a. I was standing behind him, behind him in the pitch, and he hit it. I, mean, I couldn't believe it went in the top corner. And then he scored a goal there in Durban as well. And Durban City then had you know Charles and Tovies, and you know they had a great side. And we beat them twice that year, and they won the league that year. And uh, but Dicky, Dicky, what the big, biggest memory of Dicky is obviously after the games. I mean, Dicky was <laughs> he was a funny guy and a, no, a mischievous, naughty guy, you know. And um, and, uh, and and I only had really the one two years with him, two eighty one, eighty two, and then he, you know, I went obviously we had to go to the army and that eighty three, and then he, I think he also left and he went and played amateur football then, you know. But he oh. came. I mean, you might, you must have more memories of him in Cape Town City days when he went from City to Hellenic yeah. and all that, you know. So, uh, yeah, but he was a quick feet, quick feet, yeah. good yeah. player, you know, sharp yeah. on the turn, five yards quick, and he, and he, and he, and he, he, he was just a lovely man, you know. It's just uh, anyway. He came. He came from a club called Glenville, who were in the federation. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 And he, I don't think he said a word for the first two months. Um, or I, it's, not like, but once, it's not like Dicky. But once he felt at home, and I, I, you know, he was a Muslim guy, so I won't, I won't uh, discuss how yeah. he started to feel. But once he felt part of the team, then uh, the real yeah. Dicky Benz. <laughs> there, there are stories that I cannot, unfortunately, uh, repeat. Yeah, but they, and I, I didn't, I, I didn't tell you the best stories either. Yeah, I won't repeat. Yeah. <laughs> but God bless you, Dicky, great player. God bless you, Anna, great guy. And he you know, show me. Yeah, the last I think the, the last few months and that he struggled a bit, you know, so it wasn't well, the last couldn't few get, years, yeah. yeah, it hasn't been good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going on to a few questions. I sent you a lot of questions um from and thanks everybody for uh, all your questions on Twitter. Um and again thanks for subscribing and, and, and your comments and your likes. But just a quick one. Uh, what why didn't you guys offer um come a billet terms? Uh, uh, well, f firstly, what happened was, um, this is a true story, when we came back yeah. to training, um, I was on the, the CAF A license course, coaching course. So right. the, 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 first, the first three or four days, I was still on the course, and uh, he came to training. And he came one day. He didn't ask me. He just, he came with, well, he asked them uh, before December. And I said, yeah, sure. You know, I said, yeah, I'll come and train, get to fit. And, with, you know, we can't, we never afford him. <laughs> um, yeah. And he trained one day with us, and then he, and then when I came back after two, three days, I said, where's uh, Kamei? No, he left. He didn't come back again. I said, oh, okay. And I never called right. him because I didn't feel the need to call him or, you know, that was it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, she's so like, you know. So that's from Biggie. It's a pretty, it's amazing fall. He was probably the best player in the country and didn't have a good quick, last season. At quick, Sunday. Just, quick. At, Run behind. Why? Quick. Could play, could play all across the front, you know. Um, you know, I was sad because when I was at Chiefs, he broke his leg. So I never, you know, right at the beginning of the season, and I never had a chance to work with him, and you know, yeah. So I never really, I should see him every day, you know, how are you doing, blah blah blah, and talk to him and try and you know motivate him. But I, I never, work, I never had time to work with him really much, you know. Yeah. Tell me um, any of the particular questions here that you want you want to answer yourself, or do you want me to just go through a couple of questions? I just answer, and I can try and be as honest as I can, but without being, you know. You know. That question was from Biggie and a guy called Puleng. This is from Ayande. He says, 
You did so well with Chiefs uh, in the CAF as a Chiefs, but struggled always with Super Sport and Vits. Why? <laughs> you want? I'll give you the football reason. I yeah. think. Um, I think, uh, and we should have won that CAF, but obviously I left uh, in the semi final. Um, I, I, I think we had a team at Chiefs that was was had no pace in it, you know. So there was no billiard, there was no pacey mm. players. We had, you know, Leba Manyamas and Castro, and even Nokovic wasn't there, you know. Um, and so, and we didn't have much pace in midfield. We had Bernard Parkin, but so when you play in Africa, it's much slower the game, and it's a builder, mm. you know, and and and. and yeah. So when we went into Africa, I said, well, geez, our team could do all right here because we've got a lot of experience, we've got, you know, and we're much, we're much slower. Where in the PSL, you need legs. If you haven't got legs in the PSL, the game, you know, as I always say in the PSL, uh, 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 the ball moves, uh, move, I mean, the players move faster than the ball. You know what I'm saying? Because the ball is just it's 100 miles an hour. Where in Europe, the ball moves, you know, methodically through the, the thirds and that. So... Uh, and 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 we and we found our way through, and then we got through, and then obviously we didn't have the numbers or the the, the the to come and play domestically on the Wednesday, so the legs were gone, and then you would struggle, and but then we'd go away and then do well again. So yeah, it was it was unfortunate. I mean, you know, but I really thought uh, when I left in the semi final, it was you know it was a uh, I thought oh this team can win it, you know what I'm saying? And then obviously they played La Lachli, and it was a bit unfortunate, you know. But he went there. Um... Natsika asked, "Do you think you can ever win the title again with Supersport?" <laughs> Going to be hard. Yeah, if I keep, yeah, if I keep Ronan Williams and we keep McQuena and we keep Aubrey Madiba and we keep Grant Kakana and we keep uh, uh, and 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 yeah, <laughs> easy, yeah, easy. Well, I, I said it. You know, it's, well, hindsight is always easy. But I said it when I was here. I said it earlier, Peter. I said when we won the league three times in a row. I said to the management, we can win the league here six, seven times in a row because we had a really good type. They in Palembes were in their prime. You know, we had uh, Bongani, Morgans. We had a great goalkeepers. Uh, you know, we had good Glenn Salmon up front. Great look, Chabangus. You know, we had really, really good players. You know, and um, and obviously the team got you know disintegrated and sold off, and and we just weakened. You know, I think I think Vitz, uh, Vitz, we had more chance now when I was when I when we left there in COVID, we were coming again. I think that team would have been much more competitive, and and obviously, but you you know you, you never know in football, but. Yeah, those things, those are gone, so it's, it's just great memories, you know. Yeah. Tell me, uh, a guy, Oscar Busamuzi Dlamini says, why are there so few white players in the PSL? That's a good question, eh? That's a good question. I, If you go down to amateur football, you're in Johannesburg, you go down to Benoni Northerns, and I think yeah. what happens is a lot of it, And I, but it is changing, Peter. It is changing. I'll tell you why, because we had to play rugby. Remember, we all had to play rugby. So football was sort of a... No, I played rugby. I was a true caliber. Yeah, I played rugby. You had to. So and and, was, and so when they went to high school, they, you know, sort of rugby and cricket, and uh, and I do feel that the game needs everybody. It needs diversity in the game, and uh, there is certainly more of it around now, and it's coming back again, which is good. And I said, as I say, I think the game needs diversity. Um, mm -hmm. You look at our Springbok rugby team; great diversity, and that's why they. And I think the difference skill sets of all the different, you know, nations, or not nations, uh, colors, it gives you diversity and gives you different things. And I do think it needs it, but, you know, let's, let's, hopefully it does come back more. And uh, certainly in the amateur football, there is, but they do need a pathway through and uh, an opportunity. That's more important. They need opportunity. That's for sure. Yeah. I think, I mean, when I was a kid, everybody played football. We played football before school, first break, second break, oh, yeah. after school. So we just look for football. Well, I don't well to get around football. to get around, yeah to get around the rugby thing. We all played Wednesday football, didn't we? You know, our, our matches were on Wednesday, so Saturday was yeah. a rugby day. You know, obviously in those days it was a rugby day, and and Wednesday was uh, our school football. And we, I mean, I I got to the the school national final twice with Observatory Boys Eye. You remember, yeah. you know, Observatory Boys Eye, and we, and we lost both. We lost both finals, but anyway, um, and that was that was across. Uh, 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 by then already, you know, it was across all colours and that, and it was big football schools. I mean, you know, Observatory Boys Eye. You know how many Cape Town City players came from oh, Observatory Boys Eye? David Langtree, uh, Roger Locke, uh, Paul Carstens, I can name Bobby Christian. I mean, you just, and they all, all and it was, it was Swats, uh, you know, uh, Roger Locke, uh, all those oaks, Mullocks, you know, they all came from there, you know. 
And, and um, tough guys, by the way. Yeah, great guys. Tough, tough, tough guys. Tough. Mm. And then you had, uh, you know, other schools as well. So, uh, and then, you know, everybody came in and, and it was great, man. We got to the final, the national final. So you had to play regionally first. Seapoint Boys I was good because obviously you had Mark yeah. and David and Kevin and Tiki Hartle, everyone sank, so they all played for Lenik. In the, in the, so they came from the school side to the pro side, you know. So, um, yeah. and, and a lot happened. If you look at Soweto, there was a school, I don't know the name, with Doctor, and there was a lot of them yeah, that yeah. came and played for teams. I don't know, I can't think of the name of the school. But yeah. school football on Wednesday, Wednesday football was, the, so you played in your region, then you winners, yeah. and then you all played in the national, national finals. It was huge, man. It was huge. It was huge. But we also all played for a club on Saturdays. That, I mean, I don't know if you yeah. did, but we all So we had a club on football Saturday. on a Saturday, which, and you know, that's the other thing about club football. There was, you know, in the age group, there was A, B, C, D teams, and everybody trying to get up to the A, and there was, there was huge competition. And, and the football was on time. It was organized. It was referees. Fixtures were put out. There was no, you know, and I've, we've got to get back to that organization again, you know what I'm saying, to produce footballers. Yeah. And, you know, players will players will find their way. They'll come through, you know. Correct, correct, correct. So just before we go, Gavin, any uh, any funny stories for us before you go? Anything on the memory or difficult last oh, minute? God, I, I had a, a true story. I had, I had dinner with my priest on uh, <laughs> uh, it was on Saturday night. I haven't seen him since 1975 from Lansdowne, right. Savio College. I was in Salesians. I'm a Salesians yeah. boy. Yeah. And I haven't seen him since 1975. And I walked in and we had dinner together and and uh, great times and, and some of the stories that came out, obviously, you know. But, jeez, um, um, Peter, geez, I, there's errors. There's different errors, you know what I mean? Um, oh, man, I got, there must be some brilliant stories. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll name... I'll name uh, I'll name a player. Give me an error. Hey, no, well, uh, we'll talk about a player who's just passed away as well, our old captain, Donald Reich, who was a centre-back and as hard as nails. Now, Don, now, you can't be rude on the show, can we? No, we can't. Uh, yeah, you, no, can. you can be rude. No, no you can. Well, he, uh, put it to this way. He was blessed. So when he was born, he was blessed with a, with, you know, the size. Punching I've power. never seen a size. Punching well, it looked power. like a baby's That's... arm with a... Well, he had a baby's arm with a tennis ball in it. You know what I mean? It, I've never seen. Right. So when you showered, when you showered, you 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 know you had, you didn't look. But anyway, the one. He, <laughs> so uh, what used to happen? We used to play double headers. You remember you come yeah. fr to Johannesburg? You play Friday. So we used to play Rangers Friday night, Chiefs on a Sunday, or or Vits on a Friday, and Pirates on a set on a Sunday. But Saturday we used to go to the races, the horse racing. You know, so we I used to go to the, the diamond. Yeah, and I, I was 17, 18, so I was the gopher. I had to go put the bets on. So it was Donald Reich, Wolf the Brain, Des Bacos, you know, the three biggest punters. Gary Gulliver would be one of them as well. I don't know if he was still there. Yeah, well, Gully, no. Gully had gone by then. Gully had gone, you know. And, yeah, Gully had gone by then. So we go, they say, right, youngster. No, Keith Forrest. No, Keith. Uh, Keith. And they used to come with, uh, you know, anyway. So I was earning, in 81, I was on 100 rand a month, 50 rand a win, 25 rand a draw. That was my salary. So I used to go away 20 rand for the weekend. I mean, 20 rand in the 80s, you could buy lots. Anyways, they used to say, give me your money. So I used to give them the 20 rand. Anyway, first race, we lose all the money. I've got no money now. And we had to be home by six, up or six for dinner. And um, so second race, they lose. Now I've got no money, but I'm placing the bets. Don and, you know, Desi is a book, you know, on the bookies. Desi was unbelievable. Donald, anyway, come the last race. I'll never get this. It was 81, 82 season. Anyway, they clean up. They, 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 I don't know. They, they just had piles of money. Anyway, they gave me a hundred rand. Now, a hundred rand was my salary for the month. And I only yeah, had 20. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, yeah. Anyway, so I'm driving the car because they've had, they've had 10 beers each. I've only had maybe three. Okay. Mm. So I'm driving the car. We get back to the hotel. We should stay at the Devonshire. Remember the Devonshire Hotel in Hill, right yeah. there in um, yeah. Chubet Park. Yeah, we get in there. Budgie, and Budgie, Budgie would be sitting at the reception. And it would be like seven o'clock now. He's supposed to be in Hopper Six. We got a game the next day. And did Budgie let me go? And Donald, Donald, he said, don't you talk to him. He was, he, he like, to me, like, like, we were all involved. And, and he, you know, Budgie with Donald, Donald was his uh, blue-eyed boy, you know. And, yeah. uh, and both of those guys are passed on, Wolfie and Donald. And to your bed, they find me. <laughs> I think you find me 50 rand or something. <laughs> so, yeah, Donald. You really made. You know? So, yeah, so. Really appreciate it. You're yeah. a star. And guys no, out there, please send your comments, send your uh, your likes and your subscribes and send your questions. Gavin, as always, love your honesty. You say it like it is, man, and the fans appreciate it, and so do I.
Cheers, Kevin. I just, we Pete, like, I just want to say one sorry. thing. I just want to say one thing. I just want to say one thing, Peter. Yeah. We're all here to, to better South African football. We want to see our game grow. And, and this last month, our, our national team has really given us... A, and let's get our local game... I mean, a great Pirates and, and Sundowns, fantastic, full the stadium. Let's get that vibe back and let's get our game up where it should be, you know? That's all I'm... Um, it's good. I agree. We love the game and, and the, we have our fun because of that game. So, enjoy. Chat later. Cheers. Cheers.